Okay, I thought I'd make a quick video on just how to install Windows NT PowerPC on the uh, Doringus uh, emulator. So first, we just got our emulator here. We'll make sure we got the two ROM files, the uh, video card and the iMac ROM. And of course, our copy of Windows NT4, which I put a link on uh, for archive, where you can just download it. It's got everything integrated, ready to go. I do make a file called go.txt that literally just has go, 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 go and <laughs> quit a few times in there. It just makes it uh, feel more automated. And then finally, for do it command, this is the uh, command line arguments I'm using to run the emulator. Um, I'll just put this in the text description as well. Basically, I use QMUNG to uh, create a raw disk image call this one 2000 disk because it's 2000 megabytes and now I've got my hard drive file 2 gigabytes so now I can just go ahead and type and do it and this should literally just do it you can see we'll boot up to the Macintosh screen and then from here we can go ahead firmware setup repartition for NT, select your hard drive Let's use the maximum amount. So we're finished. Proceed with the format. And then the Mac will restart. And then we'll pick up the arc loader again. Now we're going to go ahead and run the uh, setup loader from the CD ROM. And then this will start Windows NT setup. And then, um, like all the other times, we go other. The virtual floppy is installed. I just choose iMac tray loading because that's what we are. And then we need the storage devices, so it's S, other, enter again, and then we just make sure we load both of these drivers the IO and then the uh, general USB storage thing. And that's just to fake out the floppy. Okay, so we got both drivers loaded. We need a video driver, so same thing, other. And then again, we're not using NT3.1, we're using Windows 4, so just the open firmware driver. And blue screen, and then we come into setup. So enter to continue. Recognize our drivers. Then you need the keyboard with the page down. F8 to agree. Display is fine. The keyboard, we force to ATXT US 103. And the pointing device, we set to none, no mouse. Alright, our C drive is damaged or not formatted. That's fine because it's not formatted. So we're going to go ahead and enter and we're going to continue. Um, with this new version of the uh, firmware, everything works great. So I'm going to go ahead and choose NTFS. And then install the NT and go ahead and run the exam. It doesn't matter. Yeah, sorry, it's uh, super hot inside. You know, the windows open, and you can probably hear the dogs and the cars, Ugh. and whatever the hell that was. Fantastic. And then from here, Windows will just copy files. Very exciting. I'll probably just speed this up. Okay, so that part's finished. I guess I should mention that under the emulator, you really want to move the mouse around. Otherwise, it'll seem like it's crashed or hung, but it's something and it's pausing for interrupt. So, yeah, just move the mouse around. All right, so phase one is complete. Hit enter restart. And we should again reboot. Back into here. Hit enter. So far, so good. We're going to convert the hard drive from FAT to NTFS. I don't know why NT doesn't just format it directly NTFS. I'm sure there's some fantastic story behind it. I have no idea what it is. In the old days, I used to um, carry NT351 on a zip disk. 
and boot it from floppy and connect it from the parallel port so that way I could format my hard drives NTFS directly from NT351 uh, and not have to do this weird conversion okay so the Mac boots we go to arc hit enter we boot NT again and now we're already NTFS so now we should continue the graphical install And again, if it acts slow, just move the mouse around. It just might get confusing because you probably have two mouse pointers. And as you can see, of course, it's the power PC. But from here, it's basically, you know, it's Windows. You've seen one, you've seen them all. As it stands right now, there's no audio, no network drivers. So that means we don't really want everything, everything. I always go for, sorry, custom. Name, whatever you want. With your computer name, it doesn't matter. I leave the passwords blank because there's <laughs> no point. Do not format an emergency repair disk. It doesn't matter, it'd just be a RAM drive anyways. Uh, let's see, I usually turn all this stuff on, but because we have no audio, there's really no point for multimedia. In the games, I turn off uh, pinball because it doesn't work. It's probably a fault with the emulator because I've seen uh, people with physical machines have it working, so. Alright, install networking, and then from here we're just going to say, no, don't install networking. And finish setup. And again, if it seems like Windows is going to hang, just move the mouse around. So the video card is fine as it is, you can just leave it alone. Because the risk versions are different, and this thing basically only supports one video mode. And here we go, more file copying, so I'll speed this one up again. All right, Windows NT is now installed. So, using the right mouse, we can click the reboot button. And back to the Macrom. It'll find the hard drive, load ARC, and then we can load NT. Alright, so the control delete is control alt backspace and then enter and then that will just log us in as administrator. So it's a little too quick. And here we are at the desktop. Alright, so we can just close this. Alright, I'm going to just go ahead and turn on the toolbar and make this thing use a single folder. Now if we go ahead and open the CD-ROM drive, we've got a bunch of stuff on here. So I'm going to go grab the bin, doom, Nico Projects 21, Nico 98, this, I'm going to go ahead and edit. Come on. Copy. Open a new version of this, and I'm just going to go ahead and paste this stuff in the CD ROM onto my hard drive. So, 
Again, it paused there. I just had to move the mouse to get it going. Uh, Alright, so while well, that's copying, it's just some of the existing stuff I uh, compiled plus a Visual C compiler. Uh, I don't know how critical it is, but since we're shipped with Service Pack 1 and there is a Service Pack 2, I did put Service Pack 2 on the CD ROM. So let's go ahead and run update from here. While that's going, I guess my file copy completed. I guess I can show off one silly program, the, uh, the cat animation thing that chases your mouse. Yeah, no emulation here, PowerPC native. Okay, so we're going to install the service pack. Next. Uh, there's no point with the uninstall, we're just going to go for it. And finish, and then this will just install service pack 2. And then while that copies, I guess I can move the cat around. You can see how it kind of kills the performance. And there you can see where it just like paused, but it was still running and didn't crash. And then here's another one, so just to show again. As soon as I move the mouse, everything's fine. Okay, Windows NC is updated, so same thing. I'm going to hit the button, and we're going to reboot again. And now you can see we're at Service Pack 2. And we're back to the login screen. So again, Control Alt Backspace, and then just hit Enter. There's no network, no passwords, so everything's fine. Go ahead and run command. So we don't need the screen anymore, so you just unclick here, close. So I've gone ahead and built the info zip zip program for zipping files and unzip for unzipping. So in case you want to move data back and forth from CD ROM images, uh, zip files are kind of handy to have. I think I've shown this off before, but I did a very simple port of some version of Doom. A friend of mine did the uh, GDI work. And um, the math to do the uh, fixed point division is from AI, so hooray. So as you can see, this is again PowerPC native. Yeah, it's Doom. You've seen one, you've seen them all. Uh, Nico Project 2 GDI. It's kind of too slow to be playable. I can't imagine what it's like on a real machine. I think the font's missing. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think the font's missing. Darn it. Oh well. It's too slow on this thing anyways. Then, uh, yeah, I guess it's the Nico 98s there. Uh, let's see, MSVC 4.0. So, if you run the EMV, that'll set your environment to compile. And then CL, that's the compiler. So, we should be able to do a very simple program. This it's just going to print high. So we compile and link high. You can ignore the one that's I guess spelled right because that's the other thing is you t if you type 
fast on this. It'll insert characters all over the place. Alright, let's try to compile again. And then we can run high. Wow, isn't that great? We just made our own program. <sighs> 45 kilobytes, kind of chunky too. Um, I guess the only thing that's interesting about this is that the um, the linker that comes with uh, Visual C4 doesn't work under emulation, so I use the linker from the SDK for 351. And the two of them don't really like each other, but it does work for executable wise. Uh, I guess anyone from the future or on real machines, there's an old directory here. And there should be a copy of a linker, I think. No, maybe not. Maybe I'm just lying. Yeah, this older one, it's got a, um, an actual newer version of the compiler, but it does not work. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, if you have a real machine, you can just go get a burnt copy of the, um, the actual Visual C for... I imagine the interface and everything else works, whereas under emulation it does not. So it kind of makes debugging a lot more fun. Uh, yeah, but it is what it is. Uh, I guess under the updates, I could just bother showing that um, there is uh, what do you call it? Inner Explorer 4 and I don't have 4. Inner Explorer 3 and then this WX86 that can emulate some Intel binary stuff. It's very primitive. Clearly, some uh, something Microsoft had planned to make a lot more involved, but then they canceled all the risk platforms, so this went nowhere. It's kind of like FX32, but not. It's um, it's a lot more modern, surprisingly. It's just didn't go that far. But as far as I'm aware, this is the only build I could find for Inner Explorer 3 for the uh, PowerPC. So, if and when networking does work, you really want Inner Explorer 3 compared to version what is it, 1.5 or 2? It comes on NT. Whatever this thing is, it's terrible. Ah, it's version two. Either way, it only supports HTTP 1.0. It's it's unusable. Internet Explorer 3, despite being so incredibly ancient, it's a lot more usable. It supports HTTP 1.1, so at least you can put it through proxy servers and stuff. But again, for that to work, you need a working network. And uh, we don't have serial ports, and we don't have um, networking cards right now, so it does nothing. So I guess that's about it. Um, hopefully this has been somewhat informative. Definitely not interesting. Definitely not entertaining, but yeah. Um, thankfully, this stuff basically just works. You know, this was uh, pretty simple, right? It's just, you know, the hard part was... Uh, what? I guess just uh, selecting the device drivers. Oh. Anyways, that's it.